Uh, I'd like to introduce you. We've got amongst us a very eminent scientist. I'm deeply, I, I've got deep regard for him. Uh, Dr. Deepak Pentel is amongst us. And uh, he is also the former vice chancellor of the University of Delhi. And uh, I don't know whether I should coin him as the father of GM Mustard or what to say. But uh, yeah, uh, Dr. Pentel served as a, uh, Vice Chancellor of the University of Delhi from 2005 till 2010, uh, 10, uh, 10. and then uh, as a professor uh, on uh, 2015 in uh, as a professor in genetics, and he continues to work at the Center for Genetic Manipulation of Crop Plants in the University of Delhi. Uh, in 2022, he has been awarded the Serb National Science Chair for a period of three years. Ladies and gentlemen, a warm uh, round of applause for Dr. Deepak Penta. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, when I saw that uh, the, the, the small film that was shown, uh, I felt that the topic I'm going to talk about is a little bit out of place because we are mostly talking about organic uh, and natural cultivation. Uh, but I want to uh, tell the audience that uh, uh, we need all kind of solutions in agriculture. Uh, we still need agrochemicals, we still need fertilizers, we need uh, the new technologies also to bring in because uh, we are not, uh, our yields are uh, in uh, barring rice and wheat uh, our yields are less than the global average in almost all the crops. And uh, I think there is uh, uh, plenty to do uh, by all means to enhance the productivity while uh, not overlooking the biosafety side. Uh, I will just briefly tell you about uh, the current regulatory framework through which this mustard has gone. Uh, basically, it's a system to make hybrid seed and it uses a herbicide glufosinate which is produced in India and is out of patent now, uh, but it is used quite, uh, quite a bit in around the world and it is allowed in India for use on, on tea and a couple of other uh, crops. Uh, but uh, the, in mustard, we only need it for hybrid seed production plots and we, are, we don't require it in the farmer's field to get uh, the heterosis uh, uh, to get more yield. Now, there are some very important new developments in plant breeding. Uh, one of them is use of molecular markers. Uh, Earlier, uh, our breeders have done great job by phenotypic selection. Uh, like you see bold seeded mustard in India. Uh, it is it is not, you have to work hard, It's nothing is easy. But uh, visible traits are easy to uh, select. You can select in the progeny plants uh, for bigger seed and uh, uh, for more uh, yield. Uh, visible uh, or phenotypic traits which add on to the yield uh, that's easier to do but if you want to talk about quality traits uh, if you want to talk about disease which sometimes come which doesn't come uh, it is better to map these traits onto the genome onto the genome of the plant and then transfer it uh, by the marker assisted breeding so that you are sure that the trait is uh, going into your uh, recipient material. And genetic engineering, as you know, ever since DNA structure was, uh, was uh, elucidated by Watson and Crick in the 1950s, uh, there has been a revolution in biology in terms of molecular biology, uh, mo the, the, the molecular basis of life. And uh, uh, this has gone so far that the applications started becoming 
evident by in the 1970s through recombinant DNA work that you can clone DNA of any organism, put it in a bacteria or in a yeast and multiply it and express it and get, for example, human insulin was the first recombinant DNA product. Uh, the same you can we can do now in plants. Uh, earlier we were limited by uh, by sexual crosses. Uh, to some extent, plants are more promiscuous. Uh, in in animal kingdom, if you cross a horse with a donkey, uh, you get a sterile progeny. Uh, but in plants, you can cross wheat with wild relatives of wheat and still extract some progeny out from the cross and try to breed in uh, the traits like disease resistance uh, into, your, into your crop. But genetic engineering allows you to take a trait from any source. And the finest example of that is Bt cotton, where a gene has been taken from Bacillus thuringiensis. I saw some of the companies selling uh, the bacterial product. Uh, the bacteria has the cry proteins and you can spray the bacteria or you can spray the spores of the bacteria which contain large amounts of these proteins and protect your crop. And that is allowed in organic cultivation also. Uh, but uh, as you know, the GM uh, crops have been controversial and uh, there are multiple reasons for that. Some people feel that they are going to come only through multinationals. Some people say this is a very unnatural process. And some people, uh, like most of the people, we are, we are scared today. Why we have so much love for natural farming? Uh, because uh, everybody is living longer, ending up in having one or the other uh, health-related issues. And we tend to ascribe it all to the uh, to the food we eat, rather than our not taking exercise or not taking uh, not taking enough precautions for our health. Uh, but but that's the way the things are. Uh, gene editing is a very recent technology. Remember, in the 60s, we mutagenized almost all of our crops to get new variability. And that's, nobody bothered at that time how much havoc we were creating in the genome of the plant by irradiating it. Because for one mutation that you want, there will be hundreds of other mutations in the plant which you will have to weed out. But genome editing gives you precision to uh, mutate the specific gene. And with the knowledge of genomics, uh, unfortunately, we tend to do everything in a half-hearted way. Uh, we started well in the genomics area, but uh, other countries have done far, far more work. Uh, and almost all the crops that are grown around the world are sequenced. Not only crop plant is sequenced, their wild relatives have been sequenced. And in many cases, a lot of germplasm has also been sequenced. So the amount of knowledge that we have about crops today is phenomenal. And the challenge for us is how best we can use it in a safe manner to manipulate our crops. Uh, the good news is that in 2002, we released BT cotton. The activists who don't like GM crops say that BT cotton is a failure because the BT gene does not take care of Pectinophora uh, pink bollworm any longer. But if you look at the whole history of uh, the biological evolution, uh, our own experiences, you know that the, uh, there is an arms race between the host and the pathogen and pest. Uh, the pest is always trying to breach the defenses of the plant. Uh, the plant is slower in evolution because the generation time is longer while the, let's say, the fungal pest or an insect pest breeds much faster and is able to break through, whether it's a pesticide or it is a gene. So this is a known fact. To ascribe Pectinophora uh, developing resistance to the cry proteins that are present in Bt cotton uh, is really, uh, one, one should say, is complete ignorance of, uh, uh, of, uh, of the whole uh, issue. The mustard... Uh, uh, production is not enough. Uh, we import huge amount of edible oils. 
this year around 160,000 crores, which is uh, not a good sign for a country where more than 50% of the population <laughs> is on farming or at least 40-45% is on uh, farming alone. And our yield you can see as compared to Canada and China where short duration rapeseed is grown is less. It has increased recently due to a hybrid from uh, from Pioneer which yields more than the varieties and that's how the yield has gone higher. Now I have no time now to describe the Barnes Bar Star system because it has been cleared <coughs> and the good news is that the government has finally taken the uh, taken the step of releasing another crop. The case is still in the Supreme Court where all kind of uh, arguments are given by the petitioners which have no scientific logic but that's the way things are going and the government fortunately has put their case very strongly this time and I hope that the court will not interfere with the government's public policy making uh, role. Uh, so we hope that this will lead to increase in yield. A uh, lot of tests were done all in India uh, and it took about four or five years of testing and so on. Uh, Multi-site trials, I must thank ICR to conduct the trials on these. On uh, and uh, this is a site of where the trials were done and a huge study on the biosafety. This technology of hybrid seed production has been released, was released in Canada in rapeseed in 1996. In 2002 in, in the United States and 2003 in Australia. So it is out in the field for last more than 20 years with no ill effect of any kind seen. But we still did all the tests in India so that we develop the confidence and we develop the know-how know -how of how to deal with the, bias, with the biosafety issues on the transgenic crops. Uh, it's on 20, 25th October 2022 that MOFC gave a final approval to GM Mustard for environmental release. Uh, with some precautionary recommendations, it's still being followed uh, uh, for, uh, there was a big concern that bees may get affected, although there's no report on from US, Canada or Australia that bees are affected, but we want to do some tests on, on bees in India and we don't mind because we have to look at what apprehensions are and maybe collecting some data, people will know how to track the bee activities and so on and so forth. Uh, so GM mustard has not been released as a herbicide tolerant crop. Herbicide glufosinate is only required in hybrid seed production plots. The use of glufosinate by farmers is not required in the fields. A good pollination control mechanism is required over one-time development and developing productive hybrids is a continuous activity. We all know that. I don't need to, to tell more about that, but activists things see that this is the end of the day. Now, this is what I want to emphasize to the audience, and I have only one or two more slides which I want to show, and then I will hand it over to Dr. Singh because he has to go. Mustard yields are going to stagnate because we have major disease problems with mustard. Stem rot is a major issue. White rust is a major issue. Alter area doesn't allow it to be taken to cooler areas like foothills and hilly tracks. And we have Orobanke, a root parasite which is creating havoc in Rajasthan. And aphids have been there for all the time. They have been there. They have breached the defenses of all crucifer species. You can grow any crucifer, they'll come to it. So what are the solutions for it? For it is uh, uh, glyphosate and we have made glyphosate resistant plants. Uh, recently there is a beautiful work on uh, genome editing by my student and now a scientist in his independent right uh, where he has removed glucosinolates from the seed while keeping the secondary metabolites in the leaf and other parts of the plant. If you make it all low glucosinolate, uh, the pests come, herbivores eat it up, birds eat it up. So it was, it, it didn't look successful story to us to make low glucosinolate mustard. But now we have low glucosinolate in seed 
So the meal is free of glucosinolates, seed meal, and that can be fed to poultry and other animals, uh, and it will be very nutritional for them. My last slide is uh, something which you are all dealing with, and which is which I think we need to get to some uh, understanding on. In the developed countries, uh, in all recombinant DNA products. A uh, lot of research is done in the public sector, in the universities and institutions. It's immediately patented and given over to uh, to transnationals now, for example, not even small companies. Or the scientists make their own small companies which get sold off to the larger companies with deeper pockets. In India, we are, uh, we want to encourage, uh, discourage patenting to, for, for many reasons, particularly in the agriculture side. And this is an issue which we could discuss. I'm sure you guys are discussing it a lot, a lot in your uh, discussions. So that's all what I have to say. I will end by saying that we need all kind of technologies and everybody, all of us as scientists and as uh, entrepreneurs, as industrialists, we must see that the safety and the biosafety of the people who use these chemicals or genes is assured of. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Really enlightening. And this is why I wanted uh, Dr. Pentel to be in the inaugural because this was one of the latest technologies that are being, uh, you know, foreseen uh, in the near future to come across.